Welcome to another episode of Scary Mysteries. If you've been here before, then welcome back. And if you're new, well, then you're in for a wild ride. And please remember to subscribe. Scary Mysteries Twisted News Kidnapped four-year-old Australian girl and murdered Buffalo woman. Terrifying cases of true crimes and strange events. Every week, Twisted News dives into two mysterious and scary cases currently happening in our world. This week, we'll tackle the horrifying case of a four-year-old Australian girl and the surprising developments in the 1993 case of a Buffalo woman who was murdered. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted News. Number 1. Kidnapped 4-Year-Old Australian Girl Nothing can compare to the horror and nightmare that parents feel when their child goes missing. Every moment that passes by is a torture that can only be mended once their loved ones come home in one piece. But what if they don't? It all began on October 15, 2021. Ellie Smith and her partner, Jake Glidden, were taking the family to the Blowholes campsite in Western Australia for a weekend getaway. The family were residents of Carnarvon, which is about 47 miles away from the campsite. By around 8 p.m. that evening, the parents had already tucked in Cleo, Ellie's daughter from a previous relationship, and baby Isla, her child with Jake. The following morning, Ellie was shocked, though, to discover Cleo missing from their tent. Her sleeping bag was nowhere to be found as well. She immediately called the police to report the harrowing incident. As quickly as they could, authorities went on to set up road checkpoints and conducted immediate ocular inspections on and around the vicinity. A task force comprised of officers from the State Emergency Service, SES, local homicide detectives, and the National Emergency Operations Unit were also called in to address the pressing matter. The following days were nothing but pure torment for the family and those concerned in the case. While the police continued with the search and investigation, Ellie took to social media to make a public appeal. She requested for assistance on the investigation, pleading with everyone to share any information they had that could help find Cleo. On October 21st, the office of the Western Australia State Premier, Mark McGowan, put up an amount of $1 million Australian dollars as reward for any information leading to the missing girl's location, as well as to the arrest of those involved in the abduction. It would take more than a week before the Australian authorities could make a substantial development in the case, but on November 2nd, detectives received a tip that helped them out. By midnight, state police officers arrived at a secluded house in Carnarvon. With time against them, the operatives quickly enacted their plans. They forced their way into the residence, and there they found the missing girl by herself. It was a huge relief for them to discover the four-year-old alive and apparently unharmed. News spread around quickly within the community, saying that Cleo was finally found. Police officials subsequently confirmed that indeed they had discovered and rescued the little girl. We were literally looking for a needle in a haystack, and we found it, a spokesperson for the Western Australia Police said. Reports were also rife with the information on the arrest of the suspected perpetrator. He was a man named Terence Kelly, and he was immediately taken into custody following the search and rescue operation. Later, he was formally charged with Cleo Smith's abduction. The 36-year-old suspect had to be taken twice to the hospital for injuries he incurred while being detained. In an interview, Police said that a fellow detainee beat Kelly black and blue. Another reported an incident wherein he attempted to harm himself. A local newspaper revealed that the suspected kidnapper is a reclusive loner obsessed with dolls. Investigators found his social media filled with posts of him bragging about his collections of Bratz dolls. Meanwhile, Ellie, Jake, and Isla, and the rest of Australia for that matter, 
Couldn't be happier to find Cleo safely back with her family once again. Number 2. 1993 Killing of a Buffalo Woman Just when we thought that conspiracy theories could only happen in books and in movies, the real-life murder case of a buffalo woman is proof that sometimes reality can be stranger and more intriguing than fiction. It started in February of 1993 when a woman named Deborah Mendel came back from work and entered her home in Buffalo, New York. Inside is where the nursing student met her bitter end. Reports indicated that Mendel's nine-year-old daughter was the one who discovered her dead mother when she returned home from school that day. It was an inexplicable sight. The woman had been stabbed dozens of times, her hands cuffed behind her back, and the tie used to strangle her was still left wrapped around her neck. As is often the case, police immediately suspected her husband as the possible perpetrator in the crime. It was with basis, though, considering that the man had been speaking in the past about getting his wife killed. However, the direction of the investigation was soon redirected to a pair of petty thieves, James Pugh and Brian Lorenzo. Despite the apparent lack of forensic or even circumstantial evidence that could link them to the crime, the two Buffalo men were still convicted for Metal's murder. Pugh and Lorenzo continued to deny killing anyone, including Metal. After having served years of their prison sentence, Pugh got out on parole finally. Meanwhile, his supposed partner in crime, Lorenzo, remains locked up in Auburn, New York. In the midst of these developments, the defense lawyers of the two have been working to reverse the murder conviction, and they believe that the men did not kill the mother of two. In 2018, a state judge decided to reopen the case. Reports said that Erie County officials wanted to conduct DNA testing of blood-spattered items recovered from the crime scene. The results were nothing short of shocking. They found that the DNA profile didn't match either Lorenzo or Pugh. Just when you thought the case couldn't get more complicated, in November of 2021, a man who broke out of prison revealed that he was the one who actually knew the real killer. On June 6, 2015, two inmates from the Clinton Correctional Facility in upstate New York executed an elaborate escape plan. The media compared their unbelievable feat to that of the events that happened in Stephen King's Shawshank Redemption. According to records, former inmates Richard Matt and David Sweat used tools to literally carve their way out into a tunnel that led to an outside prison wall. A transnational manhunt operation followed soon after. Matt, who was serving 25 years to life for killing and decapitating his former boss, eventually got shot and killed by federal agents. Sweat, on the other hand, was captured as he tried to make a run for the Canadian border. Seven years after the escape, authorities received intel from Sweat that would largely influence the investigation of Mendel's death back in 1993. In a signed affidavit, the 34-year-old said that his cellmate confessed to strangling and stabbing to death the Buffalo housewife, and he went on to provide disturbing details of the crime. Matt used a tie to strangle the victim, he said. While Matt strangled her with the tie, he interrogated her about whether she had told anyone else what she knew about the officer. It was at this point of Sweat's information that the case gets even more complex. Apparently, the slain killer had killed the woman at the behest of a certain corrupt cop. Defense attorneys said that Sweat could be referring to the former Tonawanda Police Department detective, David Bentley. Bentley allegedly had an illicit relationship with Mendel. The retired police officer was purportedly worried that the victim would turn him in for unspecified allegations of crime and corruption. This led the defense to believe that Matt could certainly be the killer that the police had long been looking for. Aside from successfully pulling off a number of prison escapes, the Buffalo native was also a career criminal who had served several prison terms for various crimes like robbery, kidnapping, 
and, as already mentioned, murder. There were also rumors saying that the 49-year-old may have been involved in a murder-for-hire scheme, with him being one of the assassins. Considering this information, it's highly likely that Matt was hired or perhaps coerced to end Mendel's life. Meanwhile, the prosecution remained true to their conviction that Lorenzo and Pugh were the culprits in the crime. It's yet to be found out how these new developments in the case will play out. For the meantime, though, the family, friends, and loved ones of the slain victim continue to demand justice. Knowing how complicated things have turned out, it might take a while before a clear and accurate answer will arrive for this ever-bewildering question, who really killed Deborah Mendel. So there were two of the most harrowing and surprising stories around. The world could be a crazy place and Twisted News is sure to show you why. If you guys are interested in more terrifying topics and graphic content, or if you just want to show us support for the videos we put out each and every week, then go check us out on Patreon. Gain access to all our backload videos, vote on what to watch, suggest topics to cover and more. Go to patreon.com slash scary mysteries or click the link in the description.